يلا صباح الخير خلاص يا حبيبي خلاص يلا بسم الله اخر محاضره كونها طيب آه our lecture today is about the adrenal corticosteroids uh, both the mineral corticoids and the glucocorticoids and the pharmacology of these things في ضوء هون ولا شو لا انه خفف الضوء شو شوف أحسن أوكي إيه لا هيك كثير أيوة هيك أوكي لام we might not يعني, discuss um, too many drugs in this lecture uh, as much as we will discuss in basic pharmacology of using uh, glucocorticoids. And as you will see, and you know, this is something important for your practice because you're going to use these drugs one day and they are involved in so uh, um, many types of diseases. Now, to start with, um, just an overview of the general organization of the system starting from the corticotropin releasing hormone and the um, um, corticotropin uh, uh, stimulating hormone ACTH and then that goes into the suprarenal adrenal gland to produce three types of hormones the ones you know the mineral corticoids and glucocorticoids and the adrenal androgens what's important to me here and know, to know that the major um, uh, player in the feedback mechanisms in this system are the glucocorticoids. Uh, so most of the effect that happens is related to the level of glucocorticoids in the body. Actually, this level is governed by another system, and the adrenal androgens actually do not contribute that much uh, in the regulation, the feedback regulation of this system. Now, um, corticosteroids in general um, uh, within the suprarenal adrenal gland are characterized by uh, one major thing, which is the fact that um, they are synthesized in very minute uh, quantities uh, during uh, the day. And that's why um, to govern uh, how much you have in your body is related to the rate of uh, biosynthesis. You know, how much you synthesize, how much you will get during the day. And this is contradictory to what we discussed with the thyroid gland. And the thyroid gland, as we knew it, you know, there was a lot of storage within the thyroid gland. No, you just synthesize what you will release during the day. And this means if you have any kind of deficiency, it's going to be manifested immediately because you don't have any kind of storage in your body. Now, because of that, we know that the main regulator of the biosynthesis is ACTH. And that's why ACTH is a very important regulator of the level of corticosteroids in your body and any change in ACTH means that you will have problems with the levels of corticosteroids in the body. Then, the mechanism of action, of course, you know it and um, how it goes into the nuclear receptors and the dimerization and the, um, the effect on gene expression. The important thing in you know, these effects are not immediate. And then the effects are not immediate because we are affecting the gene expression within the body. Tamam? Now, um, this means that um, most likely we will have two uh, pharmacological terms, which are the plasma T half. The plasma T half and the biological T half. 
which means that you know, the plasma he has, you know, how much or how long the uh, hormone is staying within your plasma. And this is co uh, contradictory to the biological he has, which means that how long the effect will last after you get rid of that hormone. And as we know with the corticosteroids, the biological he has is much, much longer than the plasma he has. Then the mumkin hormone is in the blood for five minutes, but the effect to continue inside your body for hours and hours. Why? Because we have a nuclear receptor for the hormone, and then we are affecting the gene expression within the cell. Now, some people might talk about cell membrane receptors, but I can know this is not uh, totally confirmed in uh, biology. Now, other important things about corticosteroids are what's shown in this image. And um, this is related to the fact that we have two types of effects for each corticosteroid. The first thing is called the predominant effect, and the second thing is the additional effect. If we're talking about glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids, then we mean that we have actually two types of effects. The anti-inflammatory effect, which is the glucocorticoid type of effect, and the salt retaining effect, which is related to the mineralocorticoid effect. Now, if the predominant effect is on anti-inflammatory, it means that this is a glucocorticoid. بينما إذا كان the predominant effect هو salt retaining معناته it means that this is a mineralocorticoid. طب إذا كانوا متساويين زي هذول. This is most likely um, the naturally occurring uh, um, uh, corticosteroids in your body, and these are actually glucocorticoids in their nature, as you will see in a minute. Now, the naturally uh, produced uh, corticosteroids were used actually in practice, and they were orally available, and everything was good, and the bioavailability was good, and you know, feed good absorption after oral intake. Um, they have several routes of administration. يعني ممكن هتكون oral, ممكن IV, ممكن intranasally, ممكن inhalation, ممكن intralegional into the eye, into the uh, joint, whatever. Uh, and this is to minimize the side effects that result from the use of such drugs. المشكلة بينهم they are bound to plasma proteins with very high percentages. وإحنا حكينا إنه such thing is available with all endocrinological uh, factors which means that any effect on plasma proteins will affect the level of the drug in your body. تمام? And there is also the hepatic CYP450 uh, enzyme metabolism, وبالتالي any kind of drug that induces or inhibits such enzyme will affect the total level and the dose of the drug we are using. تمام? Well, finally, they are excreted through the kidney. Then term production of synthetic derivatives of corticosteroids, which are the ones we use currently. We don't use the naturally occurring anymore, actually. Sabab b'dayk b'inhum, they have a higher oral bioavailability, which means, yani, if you the dose, most of the dose will be absorbed into your blood. Very high oral uh, uh, availability and activity. Second thing, in they will be more selective. Yani, b'ma'na akhar, if you the glucocorticoid, most of the effect will be anti-inflammatory. The you um, um Mineralocorticoid, it will be mostly salt retaining effect without any kind of additional effect. The other thing, you know, they will be more resistant to metabolism, resistance to metabolism, uh, which means that you know, they have a longer half life in the body. Uh, what tell you, you know, the dosing uh, will be uh, given in much more comfortable way for the patient. Now, to start with the pharmacology of mineralocorticoids, just a reminder of something you discussed already, which is aldosterone. Aldosterone, صح هو part of this adrenal corticoid system, but don't forget that you know, it's not under the regulation of the higher pituitary center. Actually, aldosterone is mainly related to the activation of this system, the renin-angiotensin II system. Once this is activated in response to the reduction in the mean arterial pressure, Aldosterone will function in the following to raise the blood pressure again. How does it do it? It actually has the uh, special uh, nuclear receptors available within the um, uh, latest areas of the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting ducts. And once it is there, it will activate the expression of the sodium uh, uh, channels on this uh, membrane and also the ATP uh, channels on the basolateral membrane, 
which means as a net result an increase in the water and sodium excretion sorry retention because we want to raise the blood pressure in addition to the potassium and uh, hydrogen excretion لان نتيجه لذلك طبعا this is just a revision نتيجه لذلك بالاكسس والديفيشنسي ستيتس اوف الدوستيرون بالديفيشنسي ستيتس اوف الدوستيرون امبورتنت ثينج اللي راح يصير عندكم ايش هايبو ناتريم تمام ديفيشنسي معناته احنا وي ار انيبل تو هاف اني كايند اوف ريتنشن فور صوديوم اند واتر ولكن الاهم من ذلك اللي هو انه يحدث عندنا هايبر كاليني تمام اما بحالات الاكسس فالموست امبورتنت ثينج اللي هي الهايبر تنشن في حالة any kind of excess for aldosterone it means that we will have um, hypertension hypokalemia could be uh, one of these manifestations الآن aldosterone in pharmacology is not used actually سبب ذلك بأنه um, we were unable to have any kind of predictable uh, uh, pharmacological properties لأنه um, it has a very low oral bioavailability يعني أنت تعطي الدواء ممكن اليوم يصير في absorption 100% ممكن بكرة يصير في absorption 50% and so on so this is totally unpredictable you cannot control for the dose you give for the patient وبالتالي صار في production for a, a synthetic derivative of aldosterone and it's called fludrocortisone تمام and this is the first drug you need to know today fludrocortisone which is a synthetic derivative of aldosterone تمام Lan, it's a very potent mineral corticoid, as shown here. The effect, the predominant effect, was salt retaining effect, 125 times uh, than the uh, regular ones, the whole aldosterone in your body, and it has also some kind of glucocorticoid effect, but it's not minimal. In comparison to the salt retaining effect, Lan, when do we use it? 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 الدوستيرون خلينا نحكي اجنس شو الحالات اللي ممكن تضطر تستخدم فيها الدوستيرون؟ احكي يعني الاهم يعني سمبلي انتم احسن جواب تجاوبوا في اي حاله من حالات الاندوكراين انه في عندك ديفيشنسي ديفيشنسي واحنا وي نيد تو ريبليس تمام؟ ريبليسمنت ثيرابي ان اني كيس وي where we don't have mineral corticoids, like for example the primary adrenal insufficiency although مش كل الأحوال ممكن نستخدم فيها مثل هيك حالة لأن الشغلة الثانية اللي أخذتوها بالتأكيد اللي هي congenital adrenal hyperplasia وهاي الحالة اللي بكونش فيها good synthesis for mineral or corticosteroids whatever is missing as an enzyme لكن بالذات إذا كانت types with salt wasting يعني إنه The body is wasting always potassium and sodium, and the tail can do always hypertension. Another thing which is a new advent, حالياً, في عنا إيش يسموه Egyptic postural hypertension. ويحدث غالباً بالfemales young. We don't have any cause for this thing. مجرد البنت تكون ماشية بالدوخ أو بتكون واقفة توجع. بتشوف البنات كتير يعني زي هيك. إنه بس بالدوخ. Uh, لما تعمل فحوصات فحوصات عامة بشكل عام you don't find anything for some of them called it idiopathic postural hypertension uh, in such cases they might benefit from a trial of fludrocortisone as an aldosterone uh, uh, derivative which will actually have some sort of retention of sodium and water and that will raise the blood pressure in the patient لكن أهم استخدام بالتأكيد هو ال Addison's disease و ال ال insufficiency of mineral corticoids in the body. Now, the important part of this lecture is actually the glucocorticoids rather than mineral corticoids. And with glucocorticoids, we have to cover uh, several um, concepts related to the physiology you already discussed. Um, starting with just an overview of the several types we have. Tamam? I'm not going to speak a lot here, just to show you. رح نمشي على كل الدرجز هاي بعد القليل. لان we have three different types of glucocorticoids short acting, uh, intermediate acting and long acting. Notice the difference um, between these drugs in relation to the biological and plasma T half. المهم دائما بأنه تعرف بأنه البيولوجيكال T half is always longer than the plasma T half. 
هنا less than 12 hours بينما البلازما فيها 1 to 2 hours which is very short تمام و we have up until uh, 36 hours of biological tehab although the plasma tehab is about 6 hours and we have several types of drugs رح نحكي عنهم بعد بعد شوي وأوريكم examples عليهم لأن اللي بهمنا بالموضوع بإنه if we have such uh, a classification of glucocorticoids the important thing to know إنه by using the long acting drugs you are actually increasing the risk of having HPA axis suppression HPA axis suppression كل ما استخدمت long acting أكثر كل ما صار في HPA axis suppression which is something we will explain in a minute تمام الآن with the short acting I'm gonna cover first the naturally occurring cortisol which is hydrocortisone تمام الآن this hydrocortisone is the one that you have in your body the endogenous type of glucocorticoid produced in your body and as you can see we have it as oral as topical as IV drug could be used in so many types of diseases تمام الآن they produced a synthetic Uh, derivative of this which is called cortisone so cortisone is different from cortisol cortisol is the natural naturally occurring one and this is the synthetic one cortisone and cortisone gets uh, metabolized in the CYP 450 enzymes in the liver into hydrocortisone تمام وبالتالي بصير له activation if you don't have active liver you cannot use cortisone تمام So it has to be metabolized into um, hydrocortisone using the C450 enzyme system. And the important thing is that both of these drugs, so I can cortisone or hydrocortisone, they have an equal effect on both the mineralocorticoid receptors, which are the salt retention, in addition also the glucocorticoid receptor, which are the anti-inflammatory effect. عشان هيك If you want to infer something out of this, then this is the perfect choice for replacement therapy in cases of primary adrenal insufficiency or Addison's disease. We want something to cover for any type of mist we have in primary adrenal insufficiency, then use hydrocortisone or cortisone because they have equal effects on both the mineralocorticoid and glucocorticoid receptors. In the intermediate acting types, we have two important types, prednisolone and prednisone. And the difference between them is again related to cortisone, hydrocortisone. Prednisolone, which is the one used most commonly and it's used actually orally. We have also prednisone, which can be converted in the liver through the CYP450 enzyme to be activated into prednisolone. Tamam? Then what's important about this is no, they are um, uh, the prednisone actually is the one that is prepared to be used during pregnancy. Sabab bidalik no, it's not activated in the fetal liver. Yani the fetal liver does not have a good enzymatic system to activate prednisolone, sorry, prednisone into prednisolone. Does that make sense or not? Does that make sense or not? Yes. Who is talking about it? I'm talking about it, but why? Yeah. Why? Exactly. Because it seems that this does not make sense. That it's not activated in fetal liver. Okay, but this one could be activated in the mother's liver, and then shunted into the fetus. لكن ال interesting thing إنه the placenta has a special enzymatic system that once exposed to um, prednisolone it can go and convert it back to prednisone تمام وبالتالي it has to be activated within the fetal liver to produce any kind of effect ف in pregnancy we actually prefer to use prednisone تمام لا الانترستنج ثينج انه هدول الانترميديت اكتنج بنبلش نحس فعليا بانه في مور اند مور انتي انفلاماتوري افكت يعني مور اند مور جلوكوكورتيكويد افكت وليس افكت على المينرالوكورتيكويد تمام زي ما انتم شايفين بانه فور تايمز هاير اكتيفيتي ذان ذا هايدروكورتيزون اللي هو الناتشرال اوكيرينج كورتيزون ذا سيم ابلايز اولسو تو بريدنيزون 
than other types of intermediate acting like methylprednisone and francinolone. The important thing is you know, we still have even more and more um, uh, 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 glucocorticoid activity with about zero effect on the uh, mineralocorticoid receptor. Tamam? And this, this is extremely important in certain, for example, eye conditions. And the eye condition with the eyelids like an inflammation, the injection bil eye. This trimsin alone is perfect. It gives me a good anti inflammatory effect without causing any kind of fluid retention in the eye. They, cannot, they don't want to use methylprednisone. Why? Because it still has some effect of water retention. They don't like to have such effect in the eye. And in the long acting, and these long acting are the ones uh, used in certain uh, diseases, uh, like the DEXA and beta methazone, notice very high activity on the glucocorticoid receptor. يعني بعمل inhibition for inflammation so potently بينما it does not have uh, any kind of effect على mineralocorticoid receptor zero, zero now again these are preferred إذا كان we want to have any kind of replacement therapy and to avoid the fluid retention in the patient تمام يعني إذا جانا أنا عندي مريض عنده inflammation بال بالنيز او بالانتستن زي ما اخذته انتم بحالات الانفلاماتوري باول ديزيز ممكن انك تضطر سمتايمز انه تيوز جلوكوكورتيكويد صح؟ لان اف يو وونت تو يوز ا جلوكوكورتيكويد تو انهبت انفلاميشن بات وذاوت هافينج اني كايند اوف فلويد ريتنشن لونج اكتنج وانز ار يور بيست تشويس ار يور بيست شوت لان the important thing about glucocorticoids is that they are always having this kind of balance between the benefits and risks. We know that the risks of this uh, kind of drugs is so high that it makes your life very hard to deal with them. And that's why there are a lot of uh, procedures to do and to know to um, maximize the benefits you get from using these drugs and to minimize the risks as much as you can. The first one of them is to try to simulate the normal pattern of secretion. زي ما حكينا ب diabetes well insulin therapy in all endocrinology disorders. If you want to replace something, try to simulate the normal pattern of release. Why? Because we want to inhibit any kind of inhibition of the normal system in, inside the body. Now we know that cortisol is excreted in the body in this uh, secretion pattern. It has almost again three uh, surges. Well, I can the biggest surge is early in the morning. Yani once you wake up, قبل لا تصحى بشوي بتكون بلشت ترتفع the levels of cortisol inside the body. Now, if I want to um, minimize the risk of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis suppression. What time is best to give the exogenous dose of glucocorticoid for these patients? And why? Two. Okay. Had a job. Two. Why? I agree with you totally. And then if you give it very early in the morning, the system is already activated and started the secretion of cortisol inside your body. So if you give the exogenous dose, it's not going to go and inhibit your own sources of production. Tamam? I'll tell you, you always try to give the dose early in the morning. تمام؟ by simulating the normal pattern of secretion. طب إذا كان المريض مضطر لأنه يستخدم more than one dose of the drug, what do we do? ماشي بس بدي two doses. Two times. Then again, we will try to use this fact in no split the dose but use most of the dose in the early morning hours 
وممكن ليت ان ذا افترنون ذا سكند ثيرد اوف سكريشن ممكن انه تو ستارت جيفينج ذا ون ثيرد اوف ذات ريمينينج دوز لان الاذر امبورتنت ثينج از هاو لونج يور ديوريشن اوف ثيرابي شود كونتينيو لان اف يو يوز ون دوز اوف ذيس جلوكوكورتيكويدز حتى لو استخدمت يعني ذا هايست دوز بوسيبل تمام It's going to be okay. It's not going to inhibit the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. تمام؟ لان another thing إنه حتى لو أعطيت doses for example for four, five days, which is a very short duration of therapy. Again, this is okay, and it's not going to be able to inhibit the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. That's fine. لكن المشكلة وين بتصير إذا أنت كنت مضطر to give the drug. For more than seven days or ten days or even longer, حتى في ناس ممكن توصل لثلاث أشهر and so on. This is a very long duration of therapy with glucocorticoids. Now, to make it okay, you have to apply other rules. For example, the first rule is to consider the dosing regimen of this drug. For example, in the severe conditions, as you remember from the discussion of asthma treatment last year. In severe conditions, we try to start with the highest possible dose لحتى إنه to um, have a very good effect, a sustained effect. And then you start going down with the dose. And you don't keep it the highest possible. Then, on the other hand, if I can, mild condition, I don't need to start with the highest dose. I actually start with what? With the lowest possible dose and start going up until I get into the dose that gives me the best kind of effect. This is something we call the step down and step up approach. المهم بإنه this is a dynamic continuous process. I cannot start here and stay here, and I cannot start here أو حتى ما بقدرش أوصل لهون and to stay here. I have to step down and step up according to the response of the patient. إذا وصل the patient to a good response, I shouldn't continue on that same dose. I have to step down later on. Then other things to consider the dosing regimen. اللي هي في حالات إنه for example زاد في عندك اللود. For example إذا كان patient عنده stress نتيجة ل surgery دخل المريض عنده inflammatory bowel disease ولازم يعمل عملية وبالتالي the stress على the patient is increased. In such cases I have to give a higher dose of glucocorticoids to cover for that increased stress. تمام أو في حالات infection أو حالات severe trauma. This is something we call the stress dose of glucocorticoids. I have to increase the dose to cover for the burden. Now, the fourth thing is to try to use um, uh, or to minimize the use of uh, parenteral and systemic um, um, routes of administration as much as possible. For example, مش شرط إنه أنا أظني أستخدم ال IV. ممكن استخدم التوبيكال راوتس ممكن استخدم الانترا ليجينال راوتس تمام كلها هاي الهدف منها انه تو مينيمايز ذا سايد افكتس اوف ذا دراج از ماتش از اي كان الان وات از ذا اتش بي اي اكسس سبريشن اند ذا ويذرول اوف ذيس دراجز ذيس از شون هير وات هابنز انه انت يو هاف ذا هايبوثالاميك بيتويتري ادرينال اكسس لان وانس ذير از سكريشن اوف اي سي تي اتش ات ويل جو انتو ذا ادرينال جلاند to stimulate the secretion of glucocorticoids. This is the natural thing. And what if you give exogenous glucocorticoids? What's going to happen? Two lies in the مباشرة لازم تعمل negative feedback inhibition على ال anterior pituitary to prevent the ACTH. فشو راح يصير بالadrenal gland? It will be atrophied and shrunken. المشكلة إذا كانت atrophied and shrunken once you remove this exogenous source of the trunk شو بيصير بالجسم؟ فجأة وصل الجسم لمرحلة لا عنده exogenous source of glucocorticoids ولا عنده endogenous source of glucocorticoids فبالتالي بيدخل بحالة ال primary adrenal أو ال acute adrenal uh, um, insufficiency وهي it's a life threatening condition وبالتالي it has to be replaced as an emergency condition otherwise the patient will die تمام؟ I guess you discussed that بالباثولوجي 
LAN, in general, if you use any kind of glucocorticoid for more than uh, uh, 10 days, you cannot abruptly stop it. Tamam? You have to have some sort of either um, alternate day, uh, day dosing, which means in uh, ما بخلي المريض يوقف مباشرة الدواء وإنما بحكي له اليوم خذ دوس بكرة ما تأخذ بعده رد ارجع خذها واللي بعد ما تأخذش أنسون لحد ما يخلص الكور أو إنه بعمل إشي نسميه tapering down which means that إنه I use the full dose today بعدين بحكي له بكرة خذ أو قلل الدوس ربعها بعدين قلل الربع بعدين قلل الربع أنسون وبالتالي الجسم يستطيع بإنه إيش to catch up and stimulate the growth of the uh, adrenal gland again will tell it to cover for any kind of deficiency of glucocorticoids. Indications of these drugs are so many. For any medical student, if you want to share any question, you ask them, what is the problem? What is the problem? What is the problem? If you have corticosteroids, glucocorticoids, it will work. Okay? لأنه this is actually what doctors do يعني لما يفلس ما يلاقيش إيش يسوي بعد تجلوك الكورتيكون. for example كل في حالات ال replacement therapy واللي هي this is known يعني acute and chronic adrenal insufficiency in such cases you have to replace the patient with glucose corticoids and mineral corticoids. in general we replace them with hydrocortisone only. In most cases, we uh, replace them with hydrocortisone only. Why? Yes. Then it has both uh, mineralo and glucocorticoid effects. طب إذا المريض ما استجابش ولسه ضل في عنده uh, hypotension ولسه ضل في عنده المريض مش قادر يوقف and so on بسبب salt wasting. شو ممكن أسوي؟ أعطيك مش الدوستيرون. شو الدواء؟ الفلود ريكورتيزون تمام؟ إذا you may or may not need to add a mineral corticoid اللي هو الفلود ريكورتيزون. In general we are covered with hydrocortisone and that's fine. لا second important thing كل الانفلاماتوري والاوتو اميون ديزيزز اللي بيخطروا ببالكم. يعني for example هلا برجع لها هاي بس ثانية. Those are mainly from rheumatoid arthritis, glomerulonephritis, allergic conditions, gouty arthritis, osteoarthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, chronic hepatitis, uh, immune thrombocytopenic purpura, bronchial asthma, COPD, ulcerative colitis, organ transplantation, celiac disease, severe septic crisis, anything. Hatitlu itis, 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 and no mumkin it work. Wabitani and no, you can use. These glucocorticoids in them. Then, مهم بالنسبة لي are these things. And when you use um, the glucocorticoids, this fact: uh, you will inhibit all components and stages of inflammation. وعشان هيك one of the major side effects of any use of corticosteroids will be what? Exact susceptibility to infection. لأن أنت you don't only um, break and inhibit the induced type of inflammation, but also the regular immune response to any kind of allergic condition. Then, the problem is that they will interfere with healing. Wabtali in you give to improve uh, a certain condition, you end up with uh, poor healing, wound healing inside these uh, um, uh, patients. <coughs> Then the third thing, these are things we discussed. Third thing is the anaphylactic shock. And in the anaphylactic, you have to keep in mind that it's not your first choice. The hydrocortisone is not your first choice. Your first choice is actually what? Epinephrine. And the reason for that is that even these drugs, it needs at least one to two hours to start working. Even if I gave it IV. It needs one to two hours to start working. Well, tell you, it's not your first choice. Okay? Then, fourth thing, which is important, or currently it's important in pediatrics, the acceleration of lung maturation. Now, we know that the fetal lung has to be developed from this shape into this shape. 
وهذا happens very late during pregnancy يعني after the week 32 لحد ما انه يصير في عندنا شيء نسميه alveolarization of the lung تمام maturation of the lung of the uh, fetus الان it's well known if you give glucocorticoids then they can induce three things the first thing is the lung maturation and it تتحول into this uh, shape the second thing is the production of surfactant the surfactant as you know from the respiratory system is important to prevent the atelectasis and collapse which is what we call respiratory distress syndrome and in the end any uh, a pregnant lady we know that she has a problem and she needs to be born in the first two weeks before the 32 weeks we try to give betamethasone or dexamethasone two injections 24 hours apart تمام؟ إما على الـ 28 weeks أو إنه اضطرينا ودخلنا المريضة على على الليبر على الـ 32 weeks أو 31 weeks مباشرة نعطيها الـ first dose و 24 hours after that we give her the second dose to induce the maturation of the lungs of the fetus تمام؟ adverse effects Almost anything could be an adverse effect of glucocorticoids. Anything from any single cell in your body could produce a side effect. These, first off, in no, in cushingoid features, you should know them now. The moon faces, thinning of the hair, acne, in hirsutism in females, the presence of buffalo humps, tamam, central obesity, اللي هي lemon on two sticks. In addition also to this try, it means a cushingoid um, um, a picture which is synonymous to any patient who uses glucocorticoids for long periods of time. يعني إذا بتشوفوا أزماتك patient هم المساكين الأزمة patient اللي بيضطروا يستخدموا glucocorticoids for long periods of time. بتلاحظوا بأنه once they start using the drug, they will have such features. Other things start from the head. Psychiatric problems, insomnia, manic depressive disorders. These things happen. Go to the eyes. They will have cataracts. They will have glaucoma. Go to their skeletal um, 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 effects, including the osteoporosis, which is the most important thing. The other thing which is important is the avascular necrosis of the femur of uh, uh, femur head. Well, I guess we will discuss that. The uh, musculoskeletal system. The baby and no suddenly starts limping. سبب ذلك إنه صار في a vascular necrosis to the head of the femur. In addition to that, إحنا we are always afraid of using the drugs in any kind of pediatric age group. سبب إنه في growth retardation or closure of epiphysis. Then go to the cardiovascular system, including the hypertension and so on. The important thing is that these are mineralocorticoid derived. Then لو أعطيت الهيدروكورتيزون you still will have some mineralocorticoid effect. Uh, go to the GI effects. You might have peptic ulceration and then peptic ulcer perforation. Obtali bleeding, obtali emergency condition. Go to um, metabolic effects. The most important thing is they will induce diabetes, hyperglycemia. Khastan, if they can a pregnant lady, they will induce gestational diabetes. Tamam? Uh, susceptibility to infections حكينا عنها تمام و poor wound healing يعني انت بتعطيه للبيشنت بتلاقي بانه صار في عنده burn marks or poor wound healing تمام و finally the most important and the most severe one واللي هو the primary adrenal insufficiency with sudden acute Addisonian crisis which means that the patient will be at a very high risk of death مباشرة if you don't um, have a good replacement therapy for the patient. Tamam? For anything, anything could be a side effect of these corticosteroids. At the same time, they could be used for any kind of disease in the body. Any question? Okay, thank you.